Okay, in this video we're going to do a multivariable optimization problem. We're going to find the relative maximums, minimums, and saddle points of f of xy equals xy e to the negative x squared minus y squared. Um, and there's kind of a lot of algebra in this problem. So let's see what we need to know before we dive into that. So first thing is you need to know what critical points are in um, multiple variables. So uh, critical points are when partial x is zero or doesn't exist and partial y is zero or doesn't exist. So it's really similar to two dimensions, uh, but we have x is a variable and y is a variable, so we have to deal with both of them. Uh, then we need to know what to do with our critical point. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna calculate something called d, and then you're gonna decide is d positive or negative, and then depending on what you see there, you're gonna look at the concavity in a trace, which is partial xx, or you could use partial yy, doesn't make a difference. Um, so you calculate d, it's partial xx times yy minus xy squared. Uh, so we're gonna calculate that. That's gonna be annoying to find, by the way. Um, and then if d is greater than zero, uh, you look at the concavity. Uh, and if the concavity is positive, then you have minimum. If the concavity is negative, you have a maximum, just like in two dimensions. On the other hand, if D is less than zero, then you're at a saddle point and you're done. So you kind of hope that that happens. There is another option where D is equal to zero. It doesn't happen here. That just requires a bunch more work. Um, so let's take a look at our problem and see how it goes. All right, so F of XY is XY E to the negative X squared minus Y squared. Depending on what you've done in your life, this really uh, kind of feels like a problem we probably should be doing something with polar because of X squared uh, plus y squared kind of showing up there, uh, but we're not gonna do that, it's all rectangular. So first we're gonna find critical points and to find partial x. All right, partial x, so it's gonna be first, which I'm gonna treat as x times y. So first, derivative of the second where x is the variable is gonna be negative two x e to the negative x squared minus y squared plus second, which is e to the negative x squared minus y squared, times derivative of the first, so x is the variable, so the derivative there is just y. All right, and let's clean this up. So e to the negative x squared minus y squared is gonna haunt us in this problem. It's kind of everywhere. It doesn't really contribute much to this. Um, okay, so we take that out. From that first term there, that first product, we're left with negative two x squared y and then from the last term, that last product, we're left with just y, which you can actually factor a little bit more, right? Because you can take a y out of that last term. Um, so I'm gonna make it e to the negative x squared minus y squared, and then negative two x squared plus one, and then times y, and uh, ultimately we'll need that to equal zero, but let's find partial y. So partial y, just gonna put up there, right? So uh, it's first, which is xy, derivative of the second, where y is the variable, is negative 2y e to the negative x squared minus y squared, plus second, which is e to the negative x squared minus y squared, times derivative of the first. So it's xy is the first thing, and y is the variable, so x is the derivative. And this you can factor in uh, basically the exact same way. There's a lot of symmetry in this problem. So partial y we can write as just x, e to the negative x squared minus y squared, and then negative two y squared plus one. So uh, they're basically the same thing, except you swap the x's and y's, uh, which is gonna be kind of useful as we go forward. Uh, so we need for critical points, both of these equal zero or not be defined, but you can kind of see that they're both defined everywhere. So it's really just where they're equal to zero. All right, that's gonna be a pain in the neck. So I'm gonna copy over partial x, partial y, and the function and go from there. So the first thing I think we should note, well, we're gonna, we're gonna try to solve here, right? So set them both equal to zero, solve. First thing I think we should make a note of is just that e to the negative x squared minus y squared is never equal to zero. So it's a factor that doesn't contribute any uh, zeros to this thing, which helps a lot. Um, so partial x equal to zero, just look at partial x, either y is equal to zero or x is equal to plus or minus root two over two. So uh, y equals zero because y is just a factor of partial x. Um, the plus or minus root two over two comes from the fact that 
negative 2x squared plus 1 could equal 0, which means negative 2x squared equals negative 1, which means x squared is uh, negative 1 over negative 2, so 1 half, and then square root, and I rationalized it, which I kind of regret because it's easier to square it when you don't rationalize it, but I rationalized. All right, so where do we go from here? All right, I'm going to first look at if y is equal to 0. So if y is, I need partial x to equal 0 and partial y to equal 0, right? So if y is equal to 0 from partial x, then partial y, if y is equal to 0, negative 2y squared plus 1 becomes just 0 plus 1, so 1. So partial y reduces down to x e to the negative x squared minus y squared, which I need to equal 0. And since I already know e to the negative x squared minus y squared is never 0, the only way this will happen is if x is 0, which means my first critical point is 0, 0. All right, now we're going to do basically the same thing uh, with x equals root 2 over 2 and then x equals negative root 2 over 2. So if x equals positive root 2 over 2, then partial y kind of reduces down to just root 2 over 2 e to the negative 1 half minus y squared and then negative 2y squared plus 1. I need this to equal 0. The only thing in here that could be 0 is negative 2y squared plus 1. So negative 2y squared equals negative 1 y squared equals 1 half, so y is equal to plus or minus root 2 over 2. So that actually gives us two critical points, right? Because we have root 2 over 2 comma, either the positive or the negative. So now we're up to three critical points. And if you kind of like feel the symmetry of the problem, you can tell we're going to get two more um, when we do the same thing with x equal to negative root 2 over 2. So uh, I'm going to substitute it and rewrite partial y. So I get negative root 2 over 2, and then e to the negative 1 half minus y squared. So the only way that this could equal 0 is if that factor of negative 2y squared plus 1 equals 0. So again, we get y is equal to plus or minus root 2 over 2. So that gives us two more critical points. So we're, we've got five critical points. So we're going to have to test all five of them. But we'll see that symmetry helps us out a lot again. Okay, so five critical points. Uh, now what I need to do is I need to work on figuring out what d is equal to. So that's uh, partial xx times yy minus xy squared. So I need uh, partial xx, I need partial yy, and I need partial xy. So I'm going to copy partial x, partial y, and kind of go from there. All right, let's find partial xx. So that's the derivative with respect to x of partial x. So uh, the y is just going to kind of hang out. Um, but I'm going to treat it as part of the second. So I'm going to do first is e to the negative x squared minus y squared. So first, derivative of the second, y is just a constant. So this is going to be negative 4x is the derivative of negative 2x squared plus 1, where x is the variable and then times y, so negative 4xy. Okay, and then second times derivative of the first. So the second is negative 2x squared plus 1 times y. And then derivative of the first, where x is the variable, is negative 2x e to the negative x squared minus y squared. Okay, so uh, I'm going to factor y and e to the negative x squared minus y squared. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so y e to the negative x squared minus y squared. What are we left with? Uh, negative 4x from the first thing, and then uh, positive 4x cubed minus 2x from the second thing. All right, we can clean that up a little more. This is worth it. It's worth it to clean this up because we're going to have to substitute in some kind of disgusting things. Um, and also, once I have this cleaned up, um, this is partial x, x, right? The derivative with respect to x and then with respect to x again. Um, you can kind of see that like by symmetry, right? Like partial x and partial y, if you look at them up there, they're the same function. You just swap x and y, which means that I already know what partial y, y will look like. It's just going to be x e to the negative x squared minus y squared and then for y cubed minus 6y. Um, so I got that for free, and I'm definitely going to use it. 
Next, I need to find partial x, y. So I go back to partial x. I'm going to find the derivative of that with respect to y. OK, so uh, with respect to y, it means that negative 2x squared plus 1 is a constant. Um, so I'm going to first just factor that out as a constant, right? So there's going to be a negative 2x squared plus 1 just hanging out there. That's like if I had a 10 times e to the negative x squared minus y squared times y, right? So that just hangs out there. Now what I'm going to do is a product rule on e to the negative x squared minus y squared times y, where y is the variable. So it's first, derivative of the second, derivative of y is just 1, if y is the variable, plus second, which is y, derivative of e to the next, e to the negative x squared minus y squared is negative 2y e to the negative x squared y squared, whatever, um, where y is the variable. Okay, what can we factor here? So I can take e to the negative x squared minus y squared out of both things that are in kind of like the giant parentheses, and then uh, see what I'm left with. So negative 2x squared plus 1 is still hanging out. Um, e to the negative x squared minus y squared is what I'm factoring. And then I have a 1 and a minus 2y squared. Okay. Um, which is actually kind of neat symmetry if you look at that too, right? Negative 2x squared plus 1, which is the same as 1 minus 2x squared. So I have 1 minus 2x squared, 1 minus 2y squared, and then e to the negative x squared minus y squared. Okay, partial xx, yy, and xy. d is equal to xx times yy minus xy squared. So here we go. Uh, so multiplying xx and yy the, there's a y and an x, so I'm going to write x, y. Then there's an, they both have an e to the negative x squared minus y squared, so I get e to the negative x squared minus y squared squared. And then uh, you just have these weird products, 4x cubed minus 6x, and then 4y cubed minus 6y. A lot of symmetry there. And then minus, okay, I'm just squaring every term in this product because it's x, y squared. Okay, so we have this. What can we do? Well, uh, we have e to the negative x squared minus y squared squared is in everything, so I'm going to take that out. And then I'm going to do something a little weird to this first part. So I have xy times quantity 4x cubed minus 6x and quantity 4y cubed minus 6y. I'm going to take the x and distribute it to 4x cubed minus 6x, and the y and distribute it to 4y cubed minus 6y. So that'll give me uh, 4x to the fourth minus 6x squared, and 4y to the fourth minus 6y squared. The reason I wanted to do that is that my critical points are basically 1 over root 2s, and I'm going to uh, raise those to power. So if I can raise those to even powers, they kill the square root, and then maybe do more. So that's why I wanted to do that. Um, and what are we left with here? So uh, then I'm going to say minus, I am going to rearrange it so it just kind of looks better. Uh, 1 minus 2x squared squared, 1 minus 2y squared squared. All right, now I know what d is. So what do I need to actually finish this? I need to know my critical points. I need to know d. I need to know partial xx. Uh, and like, I kind of need to know the function, but like not really, unless I'm interested in the actual like z value at these critical points, the value of the function. Uh, but I'm not going to bother with that. So let me copy what I need. Here we go. All right, now we need to just evaluate a lot of stuff. So 0, 0 seems like the easiest one, so I'm going to start with that. So it's 0, 0. All right, when you substitute into d, um, you get e to the 0, which is 1, uh, the 4x squared minus 6x, uh, whatever, 4x to the 4th minus 6x squared, that's going to be 0. Same thing for the y part there. So I actually just end up with negative uh, 1 squared times 1 squared. So I actually just end up with d of 0, 0 is negative 1. Negative 1 is less than 0. Um, so that's the saddle point, and we're actually done with that one. All right, so that's good. Got one thing out of the way. Now we got to deal with all of these uh, radical things. So one observation to make is that every exponent in d is even which means that it doesn't really matter if I substitute a negative or a positive. So I'm going to calculate d for all of the critical points at the same time. 
So at plus or minus root two over two, comma plus or minus root two over two, so that's actually four points that I'm testing, um, D is going to be equal to, uh, all right, so what the heck. Uh, I'm gonna, in, I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking of it as one over root two. So one over root two squared is one half. So it's e to the negative one half minus one half. So that's e to the negative one, but then square that is e to the negative two. And then what happens in here? All right, one over root two squared is one half. Square that again, you get one fourth. Four times one fourth is one. So I have one minus six times one half. So I have one minus three. So one minus three. And then the same thing will happen when I substitute for y. So I'll get another one of those, one minus three. Um, and then for that second part, the one minus two x squared and the one minus two y squared, since one over root two squared is one half, I have one minus two times one half, I have one minus one, which is zero. So that back part just like drops out. So overall, for every one of these critical points, d is equal to e to the fourth, nope, sorry, e to the negative second times four. So four e to the negative second, definitely positive, which means I need to look at partial xx for all of these. So that's great. Um, all right, so what can we do here? Let's take a look at four x cubed minus six x when x is root two over two and just work that out. So substituting, all right, so if I cube root two over two, um, cubing uh, root two gives me two root two, cubing one half gives me one eighth, so I get four over eight, and then two root two minus three root two, uh, which is root two minus three root two, which is negative two root two, okay. And if I had plugged in negative, it would just change the sign. I'd get positive two root two. So I think I'm ready to go with that. Uh, all right, partial xx at positive root two over two, positive root two over two. All right, so uh, that's gonna give me, so y is equal to root two over two. Remember, this is partial xx, and then e to the negative first. Um, and then we substituted uh, root two over two to see what would happen there, and we know we get negative two root two. So that's all negative. Uh, so d is greater than zero, partial xx is negative, which means concave down, which means we get a maximum. So therefore maximum at root two over two, root two over two. Now we're just gonna keep doing this. All right, let's test root two over two, negative root two over two. Not a lot changes, right? So um, it's gonna be negative root two over two, e to the negative first, still negative two root two. That's a negative times a negative is a positive. So positive concave up means we're at a minimum. Let's test uh, the negative. So remember we said when we plug in negative root two over two into four x cubed minus six x, we get positive two root two. So a lot of symmetry that we're able to take uh, advantage of, and I know I'm talking my way through this, but it's still gonna take me like 20 minutes. So positive y, e to the negative one, and then we said it's gonna be positive two root two. So everything overall is positive. So we're at another minimum. And finally, let's test negative root two over two, negative root two over two. So it'll be a negative y value e to the negative first, and then a positive two root two. So it's negative overall, which means we are at concave down, so a maximum. All right, and uh, that's it, let's box these. So we got a saddle point at zero, at zero, zero, there's a saddle point. Um, and then we have two maximums when the signs are the same, and we have two minimums when the signs are opposite. Okay, so, uh, that's using the second partial derivatives test uh, to find maximums and minimums saddle points of a multivariable function. Uh, it's a lot of work, but if you're organized, uh, it's really not that bad. It's just like do the algebra, do the calculus, summarize. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.